How many more wins, JT? Thirteen. Thirteen. <laughs> Thirteen. The Rob Thompson uh, post game speech. Welcome to episode seventy four. Is that right? Of Broad Street Hustle. Yep. I'm your host Tommy Nanny, bringing you another edition of Broad Street Hustle, and we got the same rundown. We're gonna talk Phillies. We're gonna talk Eagles. We're gonna talk football. We're gonna talk picks, and we're gonna jump right into it. I got my co-host Jason Sayetta. Jason. What's What's up, Tom? What's up, Jason? I got Jimmy to talk. Good evening. Good evening. And we got Christopher Michael Meeker, the same crew. Happy Friday. How are you guys? Yeah, we are broadcasting on a Friday, which is nice. So lines can't move three points in negative directions after your picks are made and under protest. Um, so we will move <laughs> forward. He, he, he beat the under on, on, on complaining about the Green Bay game, Jason. <laughs> I know. The, I told him as soon as the game ended, I said, yeah, I be know. prepared for bitching. And if anybody gets smart with me, be prepared for editing. Because gotcha. I'm going to let the, I'm gonna let the profanity fly. <laughs> well, let's, get, let's not delay. That's a real so Episode 74, Broad Street Hustle. You know, we're not just a podcast here. We're your playbook for success. Let's just jump right into it, fellas. We got Phillies locked into the playoffs, and as I alluded to, to start the, the show, 13 wins away from a, a World Series. Last year they got, what, 11? <laughs> so two short. Are we doing it this year? Um, Jason, I'll, I'll let you take it whatever direction you want to take it. You want to talk series upcoming? You want to talk them clinching? Whatever you want to do, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll start out by saying it's nice that they clinched early because now you could – basically set up your rotation you know you could basically set up wheeler pitched last night we're taping on a friday so he pitched thursday night uh only threw four innings through 60 some odd pitches i believe um they're not going to pitch nola again um i guess the one concern is now tomorrow they have to play a double header so you know, how many pitchers are you going to have to use in that game? Like, are you going to deplete the bullpen? You know, I would be all for calling up Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, Iron Pigs, or whatever their names are, because who cares about these games? You know what I mean? Like, let them, let them, let those guys pitch. But who, um, uh, what was it last year? The, I can't remember now. Uh, for game one against St. Louis, did they have Wheeler? Where they set up? Yeah, Wheeler or? started. They, yeah, okay. Wheeler and started. And then they had yep. Nola game two. Yep. So they yep. were set up last year as well. Yep. So, um, so that's good. Um, so now I think you just have to kind of figure out what you want to do in the bullpen. I mean, it looks like now to me, I believe Alvarado is now the closer, which I'm happy about because it looks like Kimball's getting washed. <laughs> At this point in the season, he does not look good, um, and I do not trust him at this point. And Alvarado does look very good. He looks like he's back. Um, so you just have to figure that out. Um, you know, who's going to get your eighth inning? I mean, do you even trust Kimber on the eighth inning anymore? I, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of scary what's going on with him. Um, so, I mean, I'll leave it at that. I'll throw it out to you guys for your thoughts. On whatever yeah. you want to talk about. Yeah, go, Chalk. I'll let you take it away. Yeah, so it looks like the only set, uh, the only guaranteed starter for the weekend now is Sanchez. He's got one of the two games tomorrow. You could still start Walker and have him on regular rest if he's going to be your three, although I guess Suarez would more likely be the three. So you could throw Walker tomorrow if you want to give Suarez rest and then do whatever on Sunday. I would I, think they I could. Mean, cl- I think some of these next games might tell you a little bit of of where their playoff roster might look like, right? I mean, if Walker's not going to start, does he make the playoff roster for the first series? Uh, I think he has to because something goes wrong and somebody gets scratched, you got to have him available, I think. Yeah. There's no – like, they don't need a shorter roster. So, I mean, you'd be using another bullpen arm or a bat. I, I mean, I don't know. I guess you could – if you keep Lorenzen on, you could have an arm to start, but I would think they would still keep him. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, who are you going to replace him with? Like, yeah, I, I guess it'd be a utility guy or a bullpen player. Like, it'd be another bullpen so. arm. I don't. Know, maybe is that Orion? Orion, whatever. Does he make the roster? I mean, if he makes it, it's over Covey. I mean, Covey has not been terrible, but I mean, this guy, this guy's pretty, pretty electric. So I, I don't know. I mean, maybe he's a diamond in the rough. 
you know, I would, I would, give, I would, I would give him the shot. I would lost him. Yeah, I mean, the, like I was saying, we were texting back and forth the other day about it. I mean, the league hasn't seen him. He's got a good stuff, I and mean, he's got a great minor league season. <clears throat> um, and when the league hasn't seen you, I mean, we've seen it a couple times in playoffs where pitchers have kind of, you know, maybe played a couple weeks, a month going into the playoffs, and they've been a factor, you know, in the bullpen and in, in playoff series. And uh, I think that's the way that you – I think that's what you do. I mean, I don't know that I would put him in the highest leverage situations, but I would definitely put him on the roster. Well, there's precedent, right? I mean, with Marty Boystrom, I mean, this is before your guy's time, but Marty Boystrom was a starter, and he came up in September and went, well, 5-0, and oh, and then he wound up being an important piece, you know, in the playoffs. Yeah. So, um, I remember David Price, too. I think David Price was Price a came September up, yep. call up. Yep. And he was a pretty big factor for Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, uh, if you haven't seen the guy, you don't have a book on the guy, he's got an advantage. And that's what you want. You want advantages any way you could take it in the playoffs. And this is a good lineup. I mean, if they're going to face Arizona, uh, this is a good lineup they're going to face too. I mean, other than the fact you have Gallon and Merrill Kelly, you know, starting the first two games, assuming that they'll be able to align it properly. This is not a bad lineup they're facing, and um, you can't take this team lightly. Yeah, well, your hope is going to be that the Diamondbacks, I think technically even if the Diamondbacks win tonight and the Marlins lose, the Diamondbacks can't clinch the higher seed before tomorrow. So they're going to have to decide whether to pitch Kelly tomorrow or not yeah. if they're up two and a half games. Uh, me um, and Jason were talking about that off air. So, like, if the Diamondbacks clinch a playoff spot but not necessarily the, the second spot, do they – do they care all that much about? I would assume spot? that as long as they're in the playoffs, they'd rather set their rotation. Yeah, yeah, because it's like possible, winning. right? You play the Phillies or the Brewers, like yeah, that probably more. I mean, home field important. don't come and play. I guess if you were the two seed and everybody else lost, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. Does it come? Can't come and play? No, I, I would assume once they're in, then they they're not going to care as much. Right. I yeah, a, a win a win tonight does clinch a, a spot because they'll they'll be ahead right. of the Cubs. So yeah, right, right, right. Yep. So that could factor in in their decision making as well, like we were talking. Yeah, about. I mean, I I would love for them not to play for second necessarily and, <laughs> and get the Marlins, but uh, if if the Marlins sneak in and win three in a row or whatever, but um, yeah, I'd rather face the Marlins or Cubs yeah. than Arizona. Absolutely, for sure. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I mean it's uh, they're they're going to be home. The Phillies are going to have their lineup and their rotation the way they want. So even if you get Kelly Gallon in games one and two, you got uh, Wheeler Nola. And if you can't at least get one of those two, then you're done. I mean, shame on you. So yeah, and are we we set on the game three starter if it does have to go to game three? Oh, it'll be Suarez. We all think it's Suarez. Yeah, it'll be Suarez at this point. Yeah, I mean I think that's. The decision that's what they're going to do yeah, yeah i would trust suarez over over uh, walker and you know he has a short leash yeah whether it's lorenzen or whoever sanchez is going to follow him you know yeah i could see sanchez coming out of the bullpen you know as like a, a second re second starter uh we talked about this many times so walker i don't see as much obviously but uh sanchez i can see for sure yeah now, if I think if if you're going to do a bullpen game with Walker, he's got to be your opener. I don't think he can come in like in the fourth inning. Yeah, I prefer not to really have good in the first innings anyway. He's horrible in the first yeah. inning. I would prefer to have a, a bullpen guy come out of the bullpen. You know what I mean? Like rather than like a Sanchez, like even Lorenzen, he's got prior experience coming out of the bullpen. Yeah, well, I think it depends on what inning it is, or you know, I mean, was it last year Suarez had was coming out in like this. Second inning or third inning? He in the came playoffs, out, I they? believe, in the third or fourth inning last like, year yeah, against. I think at, it was at the least Atlanta. Sure. Yeah, it was Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah he didn't make it. Yeah. Leash on him, and then he did come <clears throat> out of the bullpen for some games as well, mm -hmm. um, in the Atlanta series too. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what really what else to say that we haven't covered, you know, in podcasts prior. And now it's just a waiting game. We got a weekend to cut to get through. See who they play on Tuesday, and then well, we'll so play I, that, right? do we assume that Ed Harper's going to be your first baseman? A lineup, yeah, I have a, I have that written down. What your lineup is, what your positional players are. I mean, from 
for me, it's it's yeah, Schwarber DH, Harper at first, Marsh in left, Rojas in center. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I'm petrified that a ball is going to find Schwarber in the playoffs. You know it would happen. You know it would happen. So yeah, it's different um, in the regular season where if he, if the defense costs you a game, it's not a big deal. Now it's the playoffs. Like, like yeah, you know, I mean you can't have that in the playoffs. So I'm not no, yep. it has to be. What would you <clears> yeah, you want to go to play first defense. just because of health wise? Like, or is well, he... I mean he's still t- a tad raw. Like you could see a couple of balls. Like he doesn't know how to really scoop right. Um, but he's. He's good. Like, you know, he's – you can tell he's going to eventually be a, no, a good No, but a Schwarber and Laugh is way more likely to hurt I agree. Yeah. Harper at first. I, I think your risk factor is much higher for something going wrong with Schwarber playing left than Harper playing first. Oh, I, and, I, I, I totally you know, agree. I mean, you don't, you don't have the natural first baseman. Bohm has played a lot, but he's trained more at third. So then, you know, I think that's your strength and you just got to go with it. But the other question is, like, if – if there's a lefty now, first two games you won't have to worry about that if it's Arizona because they're both righties. But is Marsh playing against a lefty? And if he's not, who's playing right field or left field? I'm sorry. Right. Uh, Pache. Pache. Yeah, Pache. I guess. In a playoff game. Uh, I don't know. I don't think you play those types of matchups now. I think you just go with your best lineup and just keep him in there. <clears throat> I don't know what his stats are against left-handed pitchers. He doesn't, I know he doesn't Thompson, play him. He doesn't play him against. I know Thompson pitchers. sits him a lot against left-handed pitchers. He I don't know if he's that of a bad. There that he was playing him a tad bit, but then he went back to not. So maybe his numbers weren't that good. Yeah, I could I could actually see Pache playing against a lefty. Yeah, I, I mean Pache hasn't really gave you bad innings when he has played this year. No, he's an okay player. You yeah. know, outfield wise, he's. Probably better, I definitely better than Marsh. He's, so he's better than Marsh in the yes, outfield, defensively, sure, yeah. So that would really give you a solid outfield defense. Maybe light on hitting. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, or do they have a lefty to start that would start Arizona? I'm not sure who their be, third. I guess against like Strider. If we do, you guys ball. know offhand Ryan, the third Ryan, um, Ryan Nelson. Nelson, I think, yeah. But he's a righty, I think. Uh, I'll look it up. Um, I believe he's right-handed. So, so the uh, just real quick, the Marsh uh, 2023 splits versus left-handers, uh, 98 at bats, 221 with a 315 on base percentage. So not really not, strong, but not strong at all. No, no. I, I you know if it's Arizona, you probably don't have to worry about it. But um, moving forward, Max Freed. You know, you're going to get lefties with the Braves. Yeah, not sure. What am I thinking? Do we know Free? Do we know if Free's going to be ready for the series? I think. I, I think it was a blister. You know, and that'll that'll clear up. And he's not. I mean, that series isn't going to start until the next weekend. So, and he hasn't pitched for at least five days. So that that would give him two weeks to clear up a blister. I would think it would clear up. Could open up again, but I mean, I think he would start. Uh, yeah. So Arizona has no. Right-handed starters listed according to ESPN, so they have lefties in the pen, but no starters. Yeah. Now, if so it's hope, hope play. if it's the Marlins or Cubs, then you got a problem because then it's Steele or Lozardo. <clears throat> you know, two solid left. You know, yeah, I mean that's a problem to begin with because we're you know we have a, a left-handed lineup with Harper and Schwarber as well. Yeah. Now they've hit those lefties at times, but and Stott. And about Stott, Stott. Stott's he, not really great against lefties. Yep. 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 So yeah, I mean that that could definitely and teams know that. I mean they're going to try to teams try know to that stack yep. against them. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean it's it's hard to say you don't feel as you, yeah. you felt you feel stronger in this playoffs than you did last year, obviously, because you really didn't think they were going to go far last year. Now obviously, 20, hindsight's twenty twenty, but I I just don't. I know we talked about it. You know, I this team just I mean I they have resiliency, they have the lineup, but I just can't see them like, you know, beating the Diamondbacks, yes, but then, you know, advancing past the Braves is where Like I'm I'm I, I'm I honestly more concerned about like this getting series? upset by Arizona, believe yeah. it or not. Like I would like bring on the Braves. Like it'll be a good I series. I just think those three home games are huge. Oh, I mean, the fact you that can't. three of them are home is huge. Yeah. Yeah, against Arizona. Yeah, against I mean, Arizona. listen, they probably win, but Zach Gallon's from here. 
he's pitched well here. <clears throat> you know, um, he. I remember the one game he pitched. He was he was up. I mean, he left the game and he pitched a, a gem. And I know because I had a lot of bets on him for to lead the league in wins and Cy Young and this and that. And the bullpen just came in and blew the game. So he dominated them. The one game he pitched here this year. So you know, it's a little concerning. Yeah, that wasn't there, a playoff game. But no. Yeah, you don't know how he's gonna react. Yeah, there was that was a that was an afternoon game and like a business yeah. person special, yeah, which probably had twenty thousand people there. Yeah, yeah it'll, it'll it'll be packed. It'll be rowdy. So that'll be yeah. the first time he's really exposed to that. Maybe it's not a problem, but um, it's a wild card as far as the environment. They're a little bit like the Phillies from last year in a way. Like they, I don't think anyone. We did talk about them on the. Uh, podcast to start the season as a team to watch but i don't think anyone really thought that they'd be as good as they are and they're you know they're just young enough and stupid enough to take it further like the phillies did last year so you know yeah, they, you gotta they watch a, teams they like that a pretty good lull there in the middle of the season and then i mean the national league is just the, the bottom end of the national league wild card is so bad that somebody had to be the first second and third wild card team and we still don't know who the second and third wild card team is so yeah you know i don't know i think you move arizona out of the conference and they're not even keep competing but yeah. when you have two guys like that at the top of your rotation though you're always in games and yeah. that's that's the scary part yeah i like your comparison with the phillies last year because it was the same thing and i i know i remember saying it myself i was like yeah you got wheeler and nola they're tough to they're tough to match. I mean, this was last year while Noel was pitching well. You know, it's tough to match up with. Yeah, I mean, I I, I felt I overall I feel like this Phillies team is playing. I had more confidence in the team overall than going into playoffs last year. But I was probably more confident going into the matchup against St. Louis because you were running Wheeler and Nola in games one and two of a three game series potentially against Quintana and whoever started game was it two Nicholas for or something like some players. might have been yeah so you know, mean, right? yeah. Uh, you know, Nola was also pitching better last year too. I mean you don't know what yeah. you're going to get this year. No, no he's been, I, he's been good. Good. Yeah, he's yeah, he's been he's he looks pretty yeah. good the last last couple, couple so, starts, but the first. 30 starts, questionable, yeah. you know. So. I mean, you know. Going into the playoffs, I mean, if there's ever a time for him to uh, to turn it around, it's now, so. Yeah, I mean, and, they're, and they're, especially, you know, you're, you're playing two pitchers like this, he's going to have to because, you know, I mean, going back to last year, they were shut out until the ninth inning in game one when things kind of went wild, and they only scored twice in game two, but they shut him out. So if you're facing two quality pitchers, I'm not expecting to get five or six runs necessarily in these games. So you're, I mean, if Nola gives up four runs in an inning, they're probably losing that game in game two against, uh, you know, say they're, Gallon. But they um, were on the road, those games too. So yeah, know, the expectation is that they'll, the bats will be more alive at home. Well, you hope so. You did, I don't think you can afford to have the start. Uh, Schwar- I mean, Schwarber was pretty much uh, invisible in the first two rounds last year until he got to see I don't think you're going to if, – if that happens this year, I think it's going to be a tougher road whether it's, you know, Diamondbacks, Braves again. Um, but with better pitching, you're going to need all the bats available. So hopefully he doesn't start cold. Most of the bats are pretty hot right now. Stott yeah. kind of sl- – he's in a slump. Yeah, and Turner boom. picked it back up. He got it. He hit JT's been hitting, yeah. And JT's yeah. been hitting. His splits are odd, but he is – There are odd. Uh, but Stott and Bohm have struggled a little lately. Um, hopefully they could re- yeah. restart themselves. And I, I, th- I think the team overall was on a little bit of a slump going in last year. They they were, had a losing record in September. They had got swept by a bad Cubs team before clinching in Houston. So as far as record-wise and overall play, they're they're doing better overall. So hopefully that's a I mean, that's a good that sign. That was one but... of the reasons why you really didn't have that much hope for the Phillies is because it wasn't like they were playing. They got in by default because – they everybody would lose. They were losing. Everybody would lose. So they, they were losing to lo- like Florida or yeah, Miami, well, wasn't Cubs? Like Chalky just said, they had the Cubs. Cubs. Yeah. The Cubs. So that's Cubs why, one them. reason you you really didn't think they were going to make too yeah. much noise last year. Well, it's weird because I think this year we definitely, I would say, we definitely have more confidence in the team in general. But I don't know if I have confidence to get as far as they've got as they went last year and just get hot like they did. 
Um, it was kind of a lightning in the bottle type situation last year. This year, I'm expecting them to win the first series. I'm expecting to give the Braves a, a good series, but maybe it's just because the Braves are in the way that I just don't feel as confident as I should versus, you know, how I felt last year when it was like every series they win is just a bonus, you know? The ride Braves, that we'll Braves are such a choke team, though, man. It's a it's a whole new whole new season once the playoffs start. I, I would agree. The, the, one, the thing that scares me is, though, and there was a game they played the Braves, I guess the last time they played them, where it was like, did, did this Phillies team, that you know, they have the resiliency, right? They're down, they come back, they take the lead, they win, whatever. And they, against the Braves, they did that. They were down two, they tied it. Next yep. inning, Braves took the lead. They tied it. The Braves took the lead. They tied it. Braves took a two run. It was like every time the mm-hmm. Phillies kept answering, somebody on the Braves hit a home run. You couldn't get through that lineup without getting a run. It was yeah. ending it. And last year's team, the Phillies did that and jumped on the Braves, right? And they, they never were able to recover. Where I don't know if that happens this year with that team. Unless yeah. they choke, like like you said, Jason, which is possible. And their bullpen's not great. <laughs> Got to get to the bullpen. Yeah, their yeah. bullpen's not great. I mean, you're right, Tom. They In the three win- games they won against the Braves, they jumped on them early and put them on the defensive. And, you know, I was listening back to uh, to our season preview uh, the other day when I was bored. and uh, Must have been really bored. <laughs> it was, yeah. Ins- insomnia. Um but uh, one thing, and Tommy wasn't you know, on that episode, but the one thing we were all unanimous in and unanimously wrong was we thought the Phillies definitely had a better lineup than the Braves, and that did not pan out for the, uh, wow. for the season. So if that, I mean, if, if the lineup doesn't choke, it's a tougher matchup, I think, than what the Phillies had last year, you know, at the very least. So to Meeker's point about not going as far, I think this is a better Phillies team, but I think their opponents in the first two rounds are – tougher matchups potentially than what they saw last year. Of course, you could still draw the Dodgers depending on how the rest of the wild card shakes out. Um, but I'm assuming they're going to end up getting Atlanta. No, they can't. I mean, I thought that was true too. I don't think they reseed it. They are like locked in against the Braves if they win this series. Is that okay? I thought they reseeded. Yeah, they, they don't right. reseed it. I yeah, thought they I did, but they don't. Up. I'm yeah. not sure, but I believe I thought, you guys. I thought they did too. So, yeah. So, we're getting the Braves regardless. But I just wanted to say, like Meeker's off podcast NFL betting record that's unproven, I was thought the Braves had a better lineup than the Phillies because I wasn't on that episode. So, I, I want to be on record yeah. that I did. You also did thought they're, you were going to say they were going to win 104 games. Right. <laughs> right. So, and, uh, just yeah. like, like I said, just like, like, Meeker. Me, like Meeker's Me- off NFL He's 75% record with his bets, right? right? That we don't see. Right. right. Exactly. <laughs> And the, and the other thing we were all wrong is uh, we all thought the Phillies would give them a run, and and we all said Atlanta will not run away with the division, so that also proved to not be correct. <laughs> I mean, the Phillies, you know, for all intents and purposes, are going to win, you know, 92 games, 90 games, 91 yeah. games, and still, or how many back of the Braves are they? 12? 12? 12, 12 or 13 or whatever. I mean, that's yeah. just, you know, it's crazy. All right, anything to add right. before we tie this up and uh, – why any of you be it? present in any of these games? No. I actually had a chance to buy tickets for game one, and I they were terrible seats, and I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to buy it. Yeah. They were like oh. section 400-something. I mean, I put in for the lottery for the division championship series and World Series, so if I get a chance, you know, but I didn't have a chance to get them for the wild card room. I put in, and strictly if I get them, I would immediately sell them. There's, the days of attending games are past my uh, prime. So I will not be attending games either. Are you going, Meeker? Give it a ticket. We'll see. It depends on the time. If it's during the day, I can't do it. But if it's a night game, I might be able to do it. And I would like to go to game two because just I think that if that's that, that's the, if they win game one, I think they take game two and it'll be over. But we'll see. And will game uh, one be important? Uh, of course. He wants to see them sell, run on the field. Yeah, he, he, he gets all excited he when they Oh, yeah, that's, that's, what I texted, yeah. that's what I texted the other night. I said, why are these guys popping bottles and taking pictures like they just won the yeah. World Series? This guy calls me grandpa. They all, all the they teams all, do it. What team doesn't celebrate of getting in their playoffs? Yeah, like, yeah but that's a little much. You know, I agree I that it's much, but it's just what ha- I thought it was ridiculous when the before when it was only the divisional series and not the wild card round, and whoever won to go to the championship series was celebrating, you know. But I mean, that's the way it is. 
Uh, but also, Meeker is on a roll because they do not reseed. So the NL 4-5 matchup winner, which will be the Phillies and whoever, is locked in to play Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wonder mm. why they do that. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't really uh, it's benefit. It's because, yeah, it's, you, you should definitely reseed. Yeah, because you could have, because if the six seed wins like the Phillies did last year, Dodgers get them. Whereas last yeah, year, Dodgers were the Dodgers were the one seed, and the Phillies got Atlanta. You yeah, know, it's but not fair. I mean, it's the not NBA fair. does the same thing. The NBA yeah, does the seed. Well, they dumb. start and they also start the second round before the first round. Before, yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I can only assume it's for some sort of travel setup purposes, so they know that either one of these two teams is going to have to be going out there. Yeah. But I, I, you know, I don't know. But I mean, um, other sports reseed and it doesn't seem to be a problem. But. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't make sense to me. But um, all right, let's move on to football. So we'll talk some birds first. We got a game coming up, but let's let's talk about the game that just ended. Um, total total domination by the Eagles. You know, the fourteen point score probably doesn't tell the right picture. Um, Tampa never had a chance in that game if you know you really watched it. Uh, an impressive drive to end the game. It was nine minutes and 22 seconds or 36, something like that. Just craziness. So um, the Eagles showed some life that they haven't showed in past games, but they still show some flaws, I think. I'm sure, if, you know, a couple of you guys will agree. We'll see. Let's get into it. Jason, your thoughts on the uh, Eagles' 14-point victory last week against Tampa Bay? Well, you know what I preach all the time about the Eagles. I mean, for me, it's all about their line play. Um especially the offensive line. Um, you know, they just took over the game, um, like you had mentioned, especially on that last drive. But they just take over every game. Um, again, you know, I think Kelsey Kelsey might be the best center of all time. Like, uh, maybe I'm just being biased in saying that, but, I mean, the guy is just unbelievable. He did get still. run. He, get, he did get trounced on one play. But yeah, where I that, mean, um, I, you know, that but, would do. I can't think of his name. Like, he just ran him over. To get but, him. I mean, you see him out on, like, you know, on run plays where he's out 20 yards downfield, out running linebackers and everybody else. Like, he's just so athletic, and he's just unbelievable. And I, you know, and I, I, I just so happened to watch the Kelsey documentary yesterday. I, I really think this is it for him. Like, I mean, last year was almost it. I think he's retiring the, after this year. The wife year. seems to be giving him a little bit of a yeah, I think he's, now, too. I think this is it. She wasn't happy um, when he was going on was a Saturday Night Live after yeah, the Super I saw Bowl. That. She was a little yeah. upset about that. So. Yeah, so. And then the other guy is Lane Johnson again. Like, I mean, the guy is just doesn't give up sacks, doesn't give up pressure, doesn't give up anything. Like, again, I'll just keep reiterating, if either of them get hurt, if – you know, either of them retire. There's a problem. Um, defensive line. Carter is just a monster. Like, he's Jerome Brown, Warren Sapp. I mean, I don't know who you want to call him. Donald. I don't know if he's Donald yet, but it, he's unbelievable. Um, so, you know, we'll get into this week Doing soon. Davis I, as well. Davis is playing well. Davis is playing well. I, I think Carter is Carter's the man. Though, um, that I mean, he's basically causing the havoc that you know is helping out the other guys. So, um, to, you know, totally dominated the game, like you said. Baker Mayfield turned back into Baker Mayfield. Terrible. Um, the offensive game plan of Tampa Bay. I just uh, you run the ball. You're on the. You're on your one yard line. You decide to run a dive. A slow like, developing dive. Like dive. everybody, like. Yeah, Who didn't yeah. know that was coming? Like, I, I just, I don't know. Um, so they're, they're a bad, bad team. But the Eagles did what they had to do. They beat them pretty pretty decisively. And, uh, you know, I was wrong. I thought the Tampa Bay would cover. So um, I missed that one. But, you know, what could you say? They, they, they beat a bad team, but they beat them like they should have. Yeah, I mean, I can't really add much. I thought, the, you know, they dominated. Uh, I did have the Eagles – Winning by 10, covering the, the spread. So, you know, somewhere right there. Um, if if they don't have – if Hurts doesn't have two turnovers, it's a 20-point t- victory, if not more. Um, and that's the only thing that kept, you know – yeah, at first you were a little scary because they, they dominated and they were only up three points yeah. early. So you're like, what, what's happening here? But then they – Tampa – you just saw Tampa had 
you know, no chance to really get in that game. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think they, they look better offensively, and, and at times they look better, but I still feel like some they didn't look like they ha- – they have not looked like they have last year just yet. I'm not saying they're not going to get there. I just still don't – still think they're trying to figure it out. You're starting to see things in Hurts that you didn't see last year. But, again, I, I don't – I think he's he's figuring it out as well as, as teams – play him differently as he's trying to figure out the offense a little differently. Um, you know, miscommunication at least twice, one with Goddard, one with Swift, which, which you know, I don't know what you would necessarily attribute that to. But um, just a little sloppiness on that, but it's trending in the right direction. Um, and I think the Eagles know that it's – it's they're just trying to get wins. And I, I truly believe that they're playing the early part of the season to get wins, keep Hurts healthy – they're, they're, they don't want to show too much on film. You know, they're making their adjustments, and then at the, towards the end of the year into playoffs is when you're going to start to see that Hurts running the ball again, that type of offense, if, you know, as long as he's healthy. I mean, we shall see. It's way down the road. But I feel like they're just playing this kind of vanilla offense to get, to get these wins, especially against these inferior teams that they just can dominate. I, I think you're starting to see some warts, though, with Hurts in the passing game. Like, you know, he's – uh, he's still to me he's shaky as a passer. I, I don't know. I mean, I still think you got to the the Hertz is good based on when he's able to run and when the team's able to run, mm-hmm. and he is part of the reason why the team can run so well. I mean, Kelsey said in an interview that the the they never have to worry about the backside when they do the handoff to Swift. The offensive line because the the backside of that line of the defense line has to stay contained yep. for Hurts. So they never have to worry about the collapse right. of the defense. So it's like when you know you don't have to block one side of the of the ball, the half of the field, you can concentrate on what's in front of you. And so that's a huge part, which is you could you contribute to Hurts. But I do think some of the – I would agree with Jason, and I'm, I think me I, by Meeker's face and text, I think he disagrees. And he did make a great pass, you know, to – Zaka Juchis, whatever his name is. <laughs> um, I need a Jimmy D, a Jimmy D pronunciation for that one. Um, so yeah, I don't know, but Zach yeah, he, I mean, he made some nice plays, but he also did, wasn't great at all times, and he still, to me, he moves out of the pocket too quick, and he doesn't. He did step up on that play, but he doesn't step up early. He rolls to his right. Which you know op- makes it look like the offensive line's not holding their blocks, etc. So, mm-hmm. but again, I do think they're trending in the right direction. No problem with that win. Um, I- I'm Meeker, I'll go to you. I- I- you're like chomping at the bit to to talk. So go ahead. No. Um, well, the game to me kind of played out the way I thought it was score wise. I didn't expect them to run all over this team like they did against Minnesota, but they certainly did. I, look, I agree that Hertz isn't clicking a hundred percent, but he did make some really nice throws that were big plays in the game. Can't you know? Can't deny that he got AJ Brown in the game, which we thought he would. I think Jason put a little bet on that. I don't know if you won that bet, but the, uh, I won the yards. I didn't win the touchdown. I mean, that was AJ, dropped, Brown, AJ Brown's fault too. He dropped two passes. He dropped the touchdown. touchdown. Yeah, he dropped that touchdown. So that yeah. that kind of killed killed my bet too. It turned over Baker Mayfield, which I thought would happen. Uh, they got to him more than a few times. Jalen Carter, here's a stat for you. Jalen Carter leads the NFL in quarterback hurries per snap. He's been a monster. He's been a monster. And what I was saying earlier in the year was, you know, they got younger on defense and they got faster on defense, and I think it's starting the show. And I don't think this is a good football team that they beat. I really don't. You know, they were 2-0 and team, but they didn't beat anyone, like I said. And it was a dominant performance. And, um, you know, the Hurts conversation that we're talking about here. Look, I mean, the easiest play in football is running between the tackles. And if you're chomping at seven, eight yards a clip, you don't need to have your quarterback run barely at all. You know, and they might have to change their game plan against better defenses when they can't run all over them for 200 yards like they've been doing against Minnesota at Tampa Bay and keep his jersey clean. But, you know, I know you guys still – like the jury's still out with you guys with respect to Hurts, but – like you were saying, Tommy, like they're not throwing the whole playbook out there right now. They don't need to. If you're dominating the line like you're dominating the line and you're, tr- and you're chewing up 200 yards and controlling the time of possession, like what does the guy really need to do? He, he doesn't need to run. Let's put it that way. You don't want to put him in any kind of bad situation running, running the ball. Um, so, you know, and you're, you're, you're taking big leads. You know, you're 
playing a little bit more conservatively and you're dominating the line, you don't really need to make the big throws either. I mean, but he has made those plays. And, um, you know, I think in games against more tougher com- opponents, which we'll be seeing in the back end of the schedule, they might make some changes. But right now, you know, I have a new offensive coordinator, they're feeling some things out. And I can't, you can't tell me there isn't 250 or 300 million reasons why this guy is not running the ball like he was last year. I think they're protecting him, you know. And yeah, but that's that, – but I again – they, If they can win games like this, you don't need to, but to eventually have it's, a game. They have to because – Right. I you're think not going to like the results if not. The contract, well, you keep saying that, but like, I mean, there, there's nothing to prove that you don't, you won't like the results. Okay. I mean, what, what, what about that you've seen that you think he's that he's not a good passer? He's just not. He's not a good passer of the football. So he needs to have the, the dual threat of running, passing. He needs to have the dual threat to help the running game of running. Well, you, you know. think he's not a good passer? That's your opinion, Tom. Is Jalen Hurts a good passer well, I mean, of the first football. First of all, everything we say is going to be our opinion. I, there is no fact. Yeah, I, there is no. I mean, where's the facts? No, I don't it? think. I. I mean, I don't think he's a pure. I said it many times. I don't think he's a pure passer. He's, he's not, not a pass first quarterback. He's an effective, a very, very effective passer when situations like he was in in these games where he's able to run, where the team's running the ball well, where the defense is on its on its heels. I mean, he made look third down. He made a couple night. He made a nice slant pass to Goddard on that last drive. They didn't just run on that last drive. He he converted a third down. But again, he's not. If the running game isn't working, do you, does Hertz get the ball and win a game just with his arm, like a Patrick Mahomes or a Josh Allen? No, I agree with Jason. No. That I would agree with. Jason. And Meeker, if you think but so, he's twenty one and one or three as a starter. So the way he plays the game is effective, no question. But, I mean, he he made in, in the biggest game of his life. He made a lot of good throws in that but Super he's, Bowl. He's still young. And, he still yeah. has strong legs. You know, there's things that are reasons why. And if he doesn't have that as his career pay, progresses, he's not going to be effective. I, I would. How Meeker agree. thinks he's going to be? You know, John Elway. Just like we said about McNabb. I mean, his as, when McNabb's stop being as mobile his he abilities were not as good because right. you well he wasn't a good passer of the football McNabb. So you think jalen hurts is a better right. passer than McNabb? I mean, yeah i don't know what you want i mean if they both it's line circumstantial up it's party, circumstantial don't... because i will agree that McNabb was never blessed with the talent that the eagles have so it's really hard to say that one way or another i mean the eagles success versus you know Last year was probably, in my opinion, one of the best seasons of Eagles football I've ever seen. And we all have to admit that they came that close to winning the Super Bowl. McNabb never came that close. But McNabb's never yes, had did. that kind of talent. Hey, they lost by three in the Super Bowl. Well, <laughs> what do you mean I never think, came that close? That yes, close. Did. They came, that it was close. the exact same. It was, they both he, lost by three. Yeah, but they, they, didn't, they weren't in a position like they were to win the game like, like they were okay. in, against Kansas City. They could have. Oh, come on. No, I, mean, come I, on. I, yeah, I, I mean that team was close, but regardless, I mean that's just. just and they also went to four straight NFC Championship games. When the Eagles, this the Eagles team goes to four straight NFC Championship games, then we could do the, that comparison the guy as well. Is Twenty-one, like I said, and one as a start. He's an effective quarterback. The way he plays the game, there's no question about it. But I mean, I mean, every, Jason's a big San Fran fan, and you know, like you talk about Brock Purdy. Fan. I like the way they play, and I think they're very good. I'm not but Purdy is the same. But kind of Purdy is a step below what? Hurts. But he's the same. I mean, that last game, he threw four passes that should have been intercepted. Yeah, Bert, Purdy but, has. The point been is, perfect. you can put any anyone in that position on that team, and they can look a lot better, right? You can they put anyone in position. Correct. I mean, Shanahan better. has been able to do that pretty much with every quarterback that he's coached. Right. And so what I'm saying is like, it's very circumstantial. I mean, you can, you want to compare these guys, but it's hard to really compare them because, you know, these guys are ultra talented on the line. This, and this- Brock Purdy is a better pure passer than Jalen Hurts. I'll tell you that right now. He <clears throat> is. I don't know if he's a better quarterback than, than Hurts, but he's a better pure passer than Jalen Hurts. I don't care what you say, Meeker. He is. Okay. He just is. All right. Chalky. has nothing to do with – Yeah, let's talk to you. want to jump well, in Brock, the Brock Purdy was on – I don't know. Pick another team. Brock just Purdy's to, also played, what, eight games? So he's still, he's still he's still young in his career. Like Jacksonville, a good we'll team see. that doesn't have the talent that San Fran has. Are you saying the same thing? We have no idea. It's hard to say that. 
I'm saying he's a better passer than Jalen Hurts. I'm not saying he's a better quarterback. I'm not saying he's obviously not a better athlete or runner or whatever. He's a better passer. I'm yeah. not a fan of Jalen Hurts passing the ball. You can put, you can put Chalky to, behind to, that. Yeah, let's talk. Just go line. Me, there's only a good one passer, quarterback. In in t- there's only one quarterback in today's game that is effective no matter who you put around him, and that's Mahomes. Mahomes, yeah. Every other quarterback needs players around him. So, yeah. I mean, that's just the way it is. But it doesn't change if they are a good passer or not a good passer. I mean, that doesn't – you know, that's not what we're saying. But, but Chalk- Meeker thinks Jalen Hurts is a good passer of the football. I, I think he's better than you give him credit for. I don't okay. think he's – I don't think he's – Great. I mean, the thing is, for every good he's better than you give him credit out, for. Like it's almost like you're rooting for him not to make a mistake to make yourself right. I mean, I don't get it. I am chalky. Let's go ahead. Get out of here, Meeker. <laughs> chalky. Uh, okay, I'll say this. Um, I I'm not going to break into passer versus this or that. There's not another quarterback in the NFC that I would take over Jalen Hurts right now. It's playing the quarterback position. However, you want to break it down. Uh, I don't think he's playing at the highest level yet. I think he's progressed each game. This was his best game of the year so far. There's still progress to be made, and you still have another three weeks to get that straight before you really have to worry about if they don't get improved, are they going to keep winning? Because you got the Commanders, the Rams, and the Jets the next three weeks. This team can win playing the way they've played the last three weeks and go 6-0. and Then you got the Dolphins. That's a whole other show, and you're not going to win... If you got to run the whole game against the Dolphins, that's going to be a track meet, and you're going to run out of time, I think, probably. But we'll get to that when it happens. Um, I had best centers of all time. Do we want to get back, get back to that since Jason said, Kelsey, uh, I did not see any of these it's guys. It's Stevenson. But, it's Mike Webster. I mean, who else? Uh, so so I'll go. So Kelsey is ranked top 10 here, but top three are, are uh, Jim Otto, uh, three, Webster, two. And they actually ranked Chuck Benerick as number one. I don't. None of us really watched them play, but um, – that's who they I have mean, right not here. for nothing, but but Kelsey probably changed the position a little bit with yeah. Him. He's the yeah, first absolutely of that mobile mm-hmm. down the field type of center, smaller, no. agile type of center. I mean, that's the kind of guy players that like teams want to draft guys. Like, I mean, it has to fit your offense, but he's almost a prototype now of kind of what you want at that position. So, um, he's in the conversation for sure. Um, you know, not much else to add. I'll say, you know, the the run the run defense is now the the best in the league. It's only three weeks in, but you know why you tr- you know at the you're running on first down, you're running the goal line. I mean, uh, the two Georgia linemen took out four of the five linemen themselves. So when you're playing like seven on three, how you expect to get out of the end zone? I, I don't know. So Tampa Bay did not have a good game plan for whatever reason, and the Eagles, you know, uh, whatever struggles the offense still had. The miscommunication, whether that's Hurts or Swift, or you know, I could see it being Swift, but maybe Hurts should have known better. The second interception didn't bother me so much. He took a shot. He still seems like he's a he's a, a half beat slow on some plays. Um, I don't know. I mean, he said he had he had flu like symptoms the other night. So if that's true, then you know, I, I guess that could give him somewhat of an excuse. But I was the second interception. I was fine with it. Was a deep shot and. Um, the two passes to Zacchaeus on that drive, I mean, he stood in the pocket, he got time, but he stood in there instead of taking it down and running. He took a hit on both those plays, and he made two good throws. So those are probably his two best throws of the season. He's going to have to pick it up further from that, but I see signs of improvement, but he is not playing at consistently the level I, he played he at last year for sure. Tur- he has just as many turnovers. Like he's got as many he's got as many interceptions as passing touchdowns right now. But, I mean, even like all seat, like he already has, what, four turnovers? Four with, with the fumble, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, you're not, you're not, try, you're not a hurts hater for pointing that out. I yeah. Mean, yeah, the, like, according to Meeker, you are. According you to Meeker, what I said if was, if you point is out that, that he's is, got is deficiencies, that, is, you hate him and you're rooting against him. I didn't say that. I said yes, you, you did. To make a mistake, so you can say that he made a mistake. That's and then what, you start saying, "Oh, well, if you if you read the text that I get about it, I never said that I hated Jalen Hurts." Never I said. didn't say you hated him. I said you're rooting for him to make a mistake so okay. you can point it out. Okay. Well, it's I mean, so anyway, look, I, I, Hertz has looked like a different quarterback since that end of the first half of the Minnesota game where they met, went more run heavy, and he's looked a lot more comfortable throwing the ball and has made better plays throwing the ball from that point forward. And I'll we can go to I mean, Washington. and they still have a new offense coordinator. And you can, yeah. And you can That's why I, I agree with yeah. being successful with that Colts team. Clearly, I, I, I agree. I agree with your point that they're not trying to go, you know, 
uh, balls to the wall with the play call. I mean, they're still trying to feel each other I mean, out as far just as Just look that. at Goddard. Goddard's average catch is like a yard past the line of scrimmage, if that, right now. You know, he's not. they're not using him to stretch the field whatsoever. Um, Devontae, they didn't really u use too much in, in the last game. So, all right, let's move, let's move to Sunday. They play Washington. Jeez, I don't even know. What's that line up to now? Is that nine? Nine and a half. Nine and, and moving up, and I wouldn't be surprised because it's ten. So just in case, Chalky, I will go to you first in case we don't get to you. So I'll give you, <laughs> I'll give you, your, I'll give you your chance to, to give your prediction. And your well, I'll, I'll, I'll try to be quick to save uh, for more entertaining discussion. Uh, I think, uh, you know, Washington was – a two and zero team, almost in the same vein as Tampa. They they were they trailed and came back to beat uh, two uh, bad teams uh, in the Cardinals and the Broncos. And you know they did get whooped by the Bills. Uh, I think four offensive turnovers, or is it four turnovers from Howell himself? Um, well, he had four interceptions. I don't know. Four interceptions. Four yeah. Turnovers. So. Um, and I think he got sacked nine times. Nine he times. Got, he's, <laughs> yes, he he is he is the he's had the most pressure. I think he's got he gets pressure on over forty percent of his. Dropbacks. He leads the league in the in getting pressured as far as that. Um, so you know, I I think their defense is still decent. So they could give the Eagles some problems. You know, of course, last year this was the one real loss in the regular season where they came in and, and won on the Monday night game. Um, I don't think that game plan could work because I don't think the run defense would let them do what they did. But um, they they have the potential. The defense has the potential to still play well and maybe cause a couple issues. I really don't see it as a close game um i you know because the the d line has been playing well they'll get pressure should get pressure on howell um i see it as a 24 13 game maybe so that covers covers the nine and a half as it sits right now and i think that's not it's not even an 11 point game as far as being that close i think it'll be a fairly fairly easy win um Jason, your thoughts on the game prediction? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, that the, the Joe Public dum dum is going to assume that, oh, since the Eagles lost to Washington last year, they're going to, you know, they, Washington just matches up with them and the Eagles are going to struggle again and this and that. I don't see it. Um, I, I think the Eagles win, you know, the score I have was 27 17. Um, I think, like Chalky said, the line, I think the defensive line is going to get the hell. Washington is struggling on the offensive line. I don't know if Hal's holding the ball too long or, you know, what's what's going on. I didn't I didn't watch closely the, the Bills game to see what, what you know, what went so terribly wrong, but there's obviously an issue there. Um, I think it's a comfortable win. I think it's 27-17. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what else to say. Yeah. Meeker? Yeah. Um, Washington's coming off a of – total beat down by Buffalo. And I, for one, thought they had a, a better team than that because I bet them last week. Uh, but they looked absolutely awful against the Bills with the turnovers, with the sacks, everything. The offensive line was manhandled uh, by the Bills. And one thing that really seemed to work for Buffalo, one of the things I read was that a lot of they, – they ran a lot of different D-line substitutions and they had nine different D-line packages in the game, counting for nine sacks. And what do the Eagles have? a fairly deep defensive line. So I think that's a bad matchup for, for Washington. They have some decent speed on the outside, but if Hal doesn't get the time to give him the ball, none of that really matters. Um, you know, they have, a, they have a good defensive line, Washington as well, but didn't show against the Bills because the Bills ran effectively against them too. So I think it's going to be the same type of situation as we saw last week. They're going to run the ball until you can't stop them. And I think it's going to play out very similarly to last week. Do I think the Eagles are going to get nine sacks? No, uh, but I think that they'll keep the commanders under 20 points. I have it 28-16 Eagles. Yeah, not much more to add. I, this is a game where it's like your typical NFL in 2023 where one team is just far superior than the other team. And, you know, you look at it and say, ah, everybody thinks the Eagles are probably going to beat this team. I think Washington keeps it closed because, you know, everybody's like, I, I don't know. I think the Eagles just wild them. Um, they're just so far superior. Washington, you know, Washington's weaknesses are all the Eagles' strengths, you know, defensive line. They have a weak offensive line. Their quarterback holds the ball. So I got a 34-10. I got wow. a pretty pretty big blowout. 
Um, can I see Washington score more than 10? I can. Uh, but, you know, being at home, I said, let me just let me keep it on the low side. So 34-10. Um, all right, I had some stuff planned. We're running, we're, we're getting up on time. So I'll just go do one thing about the league right now. We won't get into crazy. I had a few questions. I'm just going to say, give me your top five teams after week three right now. Jason? Uh, I think the 49ers. I think the Dolphins. Eagles. No, this is in order. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take the order. Yeah, yeah 49ers, yeah, okay. Dolphins, Eagles. I guess you have to say Chiefs, right? And then the fifth team is tough. Jeez. I mean, it could be a number of teams. Fifth. Um, God. I mean, I'll just say the Bills, but I don't know if I believe the Bills. <laughs> but I'll say the Bills. That's funny. Um, all right, so my top, I'll do my top five because – so I had the Dolphins and then the Niners just because of – yeah, Dolphins did put up 70. Mm -hmm. I had the Eagles third. I had the Chiefs fourth for the same reason. And I swear I did the – my fifth team, I said the exact – I mean, almost word for word. Yeah. But because I don't like the Bills, I didn't put them five. Okay. But they probably are five. So I put Detroit five um, because they, you know, they just won. I just watched them play as well. But, um, I mean, literally, word for word, what Jason said was the exact thought process that went in my head. And it probably is the Bills, but I just I picked against them to start the season. So, you know, that's more, more so why I, I didn't make them five. Chalky? Uh, I mean, I'm, I, I would, would be the exact same order as Jason. Uh, I, had the Cowboys won last week, maybe they would be five, but they didn't. So I'm not really putting them in the top five. The Lions are interesting. I think, you know, they... They got a, a marquee win last night, even though the Packers aren't great. But uh, yeah, uh, and even I would still I, I, the bill. The lost. Bills are they a very yeah. I mean, they blew it. They blew a lead. They you know they, yeah. So they they, 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 they could be four and zero. Yeah. Um, maybe it's time to start considering them a little more than we were prior to the year. But I, I'm, I'm a shaky Bills fifth. I think the issue with Dallas is them losing Diggs is big. It's a big injury for them. And they like, just they lose games like they did last week. Every year, every year, and it's then the coach and quarterback and, is, is right, eventually going to come back front and get running, them. He's not yeah. effective. I mean, they, they just have two right. Many. And Mike McCarthy is an awful then, play caller. He's an awful play, and and Dak just is just not a winner. I mean, that was more evident by them running more run plays than pass plays, and that that drive shows you what they thought, Meeker. So I guess for you, it would just be top four because I guess you have the Saints first. So <laughs> after <laughs> who would you have after that? Not after last week. No, I got the Eagles first, San Fran second, KC my. Miami, and for recency purposes, I guess I would say the Bills because Dallas lost the way they lost. But you're right, Jason. The injury to Diggs is maybe bigger than we than we know. And they had a lot of injuries last week, and that's not an excuse. But you know, consulting with my Dallas fan friend, um, he essentially said, "Look, you know, Dak Prescott is a guy. He is what he is. He'll win a game with you, but he won't win a game for you." Pretty good line. I like that. Uh, so. And how about hell? He loses games. He also What's that? loses. He loses games also. He can lose games too. Um, but I'll put Buffalo, Buffalo fifth, and it's a shaky fifth, like you said, Chalky. I'm not sold on them yet, but this is a big test this week, so we'll see. Yeah, I mean it's interesting. I mean, I guess it's pretty. So wait, what was your? I'm sorry, what was Meeker's order again? Eagles, San Fran, KC, Miami, Buffalo. So basically the same teams as we it's have. Everybody has same the same teams, team. yeah, okay. just different for, order. For okay. intensive purposes. Okay. I mean, it, so, I mean, it goes to show you that's kind of like what a, it's only three games, so it's hard to really say. And yeah. records, although records don't necessarily dictate it, you can't if you can't say the Chargers, who are a one and two team right now, is a top five, you know, if that's where you're thinking. So, no, I just thought it would be interesting to run through. Um, and then I guess we'll go to uh, – we'll move on because we're, we're coming up to the top of the hour soon. Now I'm going to start – and then I'm going to put it to bed. Green, I had Green Bay minus one and a half. The line, the line of kickoff was plus one and a half. That's absolutely outrageous to have a three-point spread. That's one. One. Two, if that line is Green Bay getting one and a half, I'm never betting that game. That, that, I, I, I mean, you know me. I, my, my picks are based on lines. The teams that are playing are almost irrelevant. Doesn't I could care less. Vegas already did all the work of the teams. I don't need to figure that part out. So the line is the reason why I picked the Packers and then that line to go to one half. 
So this entire season, I protest. <laughs> continue. And the that one will, thing I will we'll say that is this bed. year, I, we should have lost anyway because on, the Saints me, played a terrible fourth quarter and I did all the wrong things. And my that quarterback that got hurt. Even I can go on one. Let me just I throw this out because it, it involves me also. There was a game last year that I remember Meeker was crying about that you and I, me and Tom, we both had as our short memory and I top pick. And we benefited from a line change. Not a th- this is a three-point uh, line that crossed like, the zero. It was like two. A three-point line. I'm not talking about a half or three to it was three like two. That can happen. A three-point sp- movement so, that crossed the zero is outrageous. Yeah. Outrageous. And still almost covered. They shouldn't have even been close. But I that's should have just said money line and then it wouldn't have been a problem. But, good, but, but I digress. Yep. So, Jason, take us away. All right, so, um, you know, we'll start where we usually start, um, which is with the league stats and the over-under. So week one, oh, unders was, I believe, 12-4 and four or something ridiculous. Week two, it swung to overs being ridiculous. Week three, back to unders. So overs was five, unders was 11 in week three. Um, and on a, on a year, overs 21 and unders 26. Now there's a couple of pushes in there that I'm not including, and that's why it doesn't and the, totally the weather really didn't factor, did it? Remember we were no, talking about that? No, so never, no, no, not really. I, I would say that the Baltimore game, there was some wind because they, they didn't let Tucker. Tucker missed the one field goal at 60, which, again, is a bomb, but they'll let him kick that. When he came mm-hmm. up short, they didn't give him a chance to kick a long field goal in well, overtime. But, regardless, but it wasn't like what we were talking you know, it wasn't a, like it, it wasn't a slap fest or yeah. something like that, yeah. yeah. But the the thing I'm going to try and point out is I'm wondering if the if the odds makers are each week adjusting, you know, because unders were so strong in week one, if they're taking lines down, and now overs was so strong in week two, and now vice versa in week three, now there's overs come back in week four. So we'll have to see. Um, public again, public's crushing. This is this is a Joe public year if I've ever seen one so far. Um, the public and over unders was nine and seven last week, twenty eight and nineteen on the year so far. Yeah, uh, and then uh, for spread, they were also nine and seven, twenty six and twenty on the year, fifty seven percent. Does anybody think that's going to continue? There's a rude awakening coming with the yeah, public. Yeah, I don't, Jason. Do you have favorites and underdogs in there? Or no, you didn't get that. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't have that. I'd be um, I'm Chuck might be able to pull that out real quick. If not, we can have it for next week. That's just something. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at that. But um, so now we'll get to our uh, our weeks, and we'll start with Chalky, uh, because Chalky was our only winner last week. Um, he went uh, two and one. Um, he hit his best bet, which was the Colts Ravens under. Um, he won his second bet, which was the Bills Commanders under. And but then he lost on the over in the Eagles Bucks game. Um, uh, that, was, that was gonna be, that was a stone cold lock, right? Right, won the first two. We knew that. Yeah, was not gonna, gonna, yeah. yeah. Uh, go to me um, now. Luckily for me, <clears throat> my best bet only counts as one loss. <laughs> so. You lose by 50 or you lose by one, it counts the same. So I lost by 50, though, with my Broncos pick. If which, you're going to lose, that's how you lose. Yeah, that's, that's true. That is true. I didn't have to sweat that game out at all. Um, so that was a, a bad best bet. Um, I did win the Bills Commanders under, just like Chalky. But then I, I had the Bucks. You know, that was another bad pick. So uh, one and two, I'm um, struggling. Uh, go, to, go to Tommy. Um, already have spoke about his best bet, um, the Packers, which he didn't cover when he picked it, but he did cover it. Depends on when you bet it, whether or not that was covered or not. Um, game two, he lost with the Vikings. Um, he had them minus no, one. Just, just Kirk Cousins pig. He had yeah, the, the Chargers he tried was, to lose the game <laughs> for you. Bad team. <laughs> uh, but then he won that. with his, his third pick, the Browns. So he went one and two. And then we get to our boy Meeker, um, who actually beat me head to head. He had the Eagles with his Joe Public pick with the Eagles road favorite team, Joe Public, but he won it. Um, so he won a head to head with me, which he won a couple last year too. I did fail to mention that me and Tommy did beat Chalky in a head to head last week. So Chalky, you got away with 
that on last week's show by us. We, not we're, we, we're not bringing up the past. Like, if, okay. it's, not, if it's not relevant to the current stats, anyway, it, it doesn't exist. Don't make me curse on this show. <laughs> so, anyway, I already cursed on the show. <laughs> no, no, I, I wasn't really going to So, curse. anyway, um, but Meeker, you know, as as usual, as is usually uh, one and two, he went, is one and two week. He's a 33% handicap. But only year. on the pod. He was five. Only on the pod. Yeah, when he makes his real bets, he's 75%. <laughs> So me and Jason but, lost a collective by 80 points this week because I had Washington. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, so you lost the, the Chiefs-Bears uh, under, oh, and then you got that's... annihilated in the Washington bet. So you went one and two. Yeah, Mika, your games weren't even watchable. I mean, none of your games no. were even watchable. So for the year, uh, Chalky is the leader right now. So Chalky's five and four with a 7% ROI. So he leads us in ROI. Uh, 56% win percentage. Um, I'm next. I'm also five and four, but I only have a five percent ROI, fifty-six percent win percentage. Tommy's next. He's four and five with a minus five percent win percentage, forty-four percent win, f- minus five percent ROI, forty-four percent win. And then our boy Meeker, with his three and six, his minus thirty-six percent ROI, his thirty-three percent win percentage. Um, best bets. Uh, I'm one and two minus $107 profit minus 33%. I'm horrific so far in my best bets. Uh, Tommy's also one and two minus 115 minus 38% ROI. Chalky is our leader with two and one $81 and 80 cents profit, 67% win 27% ROI. And then our boy Meeker one and two minus $109 loss. Minus thirty six percent ROI on the year. Our pod for best bets is five and seven. Minus two hundred and fifty dollars. Minus twenty one percent ROI. Terrible. Um, let's finish with our all time yeah. record, shall we? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, shall we? Left time left. I believe we shall. Uh, I'm thirty eight and twenty three. A profit no. of eleven hundred forty dollars. 18% ROI, 62% win percentage. Tommy, 32 and 23, 824 profit, 14% ROI, 58% win. Chalky, 29 to 33, minus 648, minus 10% ROI, 47% win. Our boy Meeker, our 43% handicapper Meeker, 26 and 39, minus $1,000.50 if you followed every Meeker bet on this podcast. Minus 17% ROI. It's, it's the one, it let me throw in your a smile, a smile on his let face. Let me throw in your, your best bet win percentage on the podcast. Otherwise, there's no smiling. <laughs> Seven <laughs> and 13 if you follow Meeker's best bets. So I improved you know? this week. Huh? I improved, I improved this you week. did improve. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the picks. Now, for Meeker, are you going to be watching the uh, Broncos and Bears game? I know you. Oh, you're wow. Ba- you're he likes watching those, that Bears <laughs> those games. Jeez. Uh, all right, I am gonna go first because I just I need to get it out of the way and then I can just sit back. Um, so all my picks are. Oh, I wanted to say I'm very disappointed in this podcast. We are doing Brett poorly so far. It starts. To yes. I'm more disappointed in Chalky and Meeker that a year the public is actually doing well. How are you guys not winning? Well, especially I Meeker. I don't understand. Let's give Chalky a break because Chalky's good on his best bets and stuff. <laughs> Meeker. You should. You had your Joe Public Eagles pick last week, which is one of the biggest Joe Public best bets that I've ever seen. But then you followed up with, you can't find these other public picks that are winning. Uh, I got one this week for you. Go ahead, Tommy. Okay. Can't wait. All right, so all my picks are against the public this week. They're all, um, you know, not looking in line. So as long as these lines don't change, and it is Friday, so I feel a little bit better. Um, but so my best bet of this week is Indianapolis minus one. They're at minus 105 um, as of before the pod. Chalky, you, you do that, is, that, is, that, is, that is correct. Okay. Uh, my second pick is Cincinnati minus two and a half, minus 115. Still the same after the one before the pod started. Uh, the 115 on Cincinnati was, hold on, let me scroll. Uh, Should be minus two and a half. I don't know um, why that is not a Yes, two and a half, 115. It is not, though. It, it's not. Remember, you're right. Because yeah, it doesn't. And they ah, were just play. off as a national TV. Um, 
And if you were watching the Eagles game, you still got the save because they did that wonderful split screen for half the game. And then uh, my last pick is Carolina Moneyline, which is plus 180 against the Vikings for the Vikings to go 0-4. Hmm. All right, we will go to Chalky, the big winner last week. Uh, well, I, I, I have less of a clue than normal this week looking at everything. So my best bet is going to be Indianapolis minus one at 105. Uh, I like to change my best bet. No. <laughs> I mean, that line seems a little weird. His best bets aren't bad. And when you look at uh, how the public is crushing the Rams right now, I, you know, I'll, I'll take the Indy minus, uh, minus 105. Uh, my second bet is going to be uh, the Saints. Minus three at minus 118. Heavy public action so far on Tampa. Yeah, that was actually um, my fourth team. Saints. So. Really now, before I get to the third choice, let me give let me give some some pod stats. So, uh, over 21 weeks of the regular season, my best bets have yielded a profit of $147. My second choices yield a profit of $352. This is funny. My third choice has yielded a loss of 1,126. So. Clearly, so your third choice is basically as good as any of Meeker's choices. It's like you make yeah. the picks, then you just get tired and just pick and just pick out the hat. So, so I'm going to change my strategy. My third pick is San Francisco money line minus nine fifty. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, I kind of wanted to there. Uh, I'm going to go uh, with uh, under in the uh, Bears Broncos game uh, that is currently uh, under forty six and a half minus one ten. Uh, that isn't dis- a that isn't a public pick. I mean, I'm just assuming. I have. I didn't it is a public that. pick. I would um, assume right now, under the um, crappy game. Was yeah, so it's, it's number problem. number number of bets, yes. Money, no. So it's split. Okay. Yeah, um, it seems like that would be a obvious. Yeah. Fifty-eight percent. Fifty-eight percent of the money is on over, and fifty-six uh, percent of the bets are under. So. It's split. It could be a public. I mean, it is public. It's in sense, and it's moved up a little bit. But um, I'm going to go unders there because I really. I mean, there's a couple other teams. You know, the Chargers at five is a little shaky because it sounds like Garoppolo's out. Uh, I figured that could he's be out a, or playing. He's in. He's in concussion protocol I don't still. Know yet. Oh, I thought he practiced. He was limited. He's, still... he's been limited in practice. I mean, you, yeah. Usually, concussion protocol on Friday means you're out, but he's not like declared out. Um, which, by the way, unless he got concussed on the last play, how long did he play in that game Sunday night with concussion before they, you know? Uh, and then there was another game I looked at. The, the Giants-Seahawks was a little close, I thought. But anyway, I, I like I said, don't have a clue. So we're going with the Bears under at 46 and a half. All right. And we will go to Jason. So my top pick is going to be the Steelers this week at minus two and a half or I don't know if that moved to three it might have moved to three it was two and a half this morning that's uh, three one oh five three one oh five okay uh, I don't like it as much but I'll keep it um, Texans coming off the big road win in in Jacksonville they're not that good their offensive line I believe is banged up um, and the Steelers pass rush is gonna do a number on CJ Stroud this week, so um, I, I think the Steelers are going to win that game. Um, so that's my top pick. My number two pick is going to be the under in the Raiders Chargers game. I believe it's under forty. It was forty nine when I looked. Chalky, what is it now? Forty eight and a half minus one hundred eight. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess I'll keep it, but uh, minus one hundred eight. Uh, you know, Garoppolo's hurt. He might or might not play. If he does play, I don't think he's going to be 100%. If he doesn't play, there's a clown show behind him at quarterback. Um, Chargers offense, you know, they they lost Mike Williams. Keenan Allen's banged up. Um, they're, they're, I think they're going to run the ball a lot this week. Um, so, I, you know, that'll keep, the, that'll keep the score down, I believe. So I'm going under in that game. And my third pick is going to be the Saints at minus three, um, minus 118. Um... I don't like Tampa Bay at all. I almost, I don't care who quarterbacks the Saints. They're saying Carr might play, but I don't think it matters. I don't think Winston's a bad backup. Um, 
And I think they win that game regardless of his quarterback. And I, I think Tampa Bay is just not a good team. So is it minus three, minus 118? Yep. Okay. So that's my third pick. All right. And last, but certainly not le- uh, certainly least, is Meeker. <laughs> so I do have kind of a public pick for my best bet. And that's a team that I think really needs to win a game and win it impressively. And that's Jacksonville. They're, they're at, well, it's a neutral site, but I guess it's a home game for them. Uh, they're given three, uh, and it's 112. Uh, they have to step up and win this game. I mean, I, it's the bottom line. I mean, I can't see this team going one and three. I think we all thought they were going to be a pretty good team, you know, contend for the Super Bowl. Uh, so they're in des- kind of desperate times right now, so I see them winning that game. The second is a completely not public pick. And that's over in the Cleveland-Baltimore game. And that's over 39 and minus 110. That line has moved down considerably. 108. Uh, so, Go ahead, Chalk. It dropped to 108, so you got a little bit better there. Okay. And what's so, the number? 39? Yeah, 39 is correct. It's 108 as we speak. Is there a reason that line's moved? I think it's because they don't know if Deshaun Watson's going to play. Yeah, he's Baltimore's got a shoulder got a lot of injuries, but... You know, if you have injuries on defense, that, that could mean more scoring. And it went from 44, it opened at 44, and now it's at 39, and public's all over the under. Cleveland's backup quarterback. I actually don't even know. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. But, you might but, want to, if you're, if you're making that one of your bets, you might want to kind of know who to quarterback care. Like I said, regardless of the team that's playing, I'm using Tommy's philosophy. I think it's a big public bet, and I'm going against the public on that, and I'm going over 39. And last, okay. last but not least, I like that. I mean, it's just more of a hunch than anything else. I think the Giants are going to win because their schedule coming up for the next three games is harrowing. Uh, and if they don't win this game, they're going to be one and five real quick. Seattle's coming across the country um, after. So does that three... make them try harder to win this game? <laughs> Huh? Like what what is the reasoning? That I just they think have that to win I just think game? they're going to win regardless. But you know, so if they do lose harder. this game, they're in big trouble. So they're minus one and a half, minus one ten, taking the Giants on Monday night at home. Hold on, yeah. hold on. Gi- Giants are underdogs. One and a half, right? Plus, Plus one, one and a half. half I meant yeah, to say. Yeah. 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 So okay. Cleveland's backup is Dorian Thompson. Thompson Robinson, <laughs> who actually he played pretty well in the preseason, actually. Yeah, against but. guys yeah. that are bagging groceries. At shop is that room. was that being sarcastic, Charlie? That was actually real. Funny. No, I, I mean like he, I, no, I mean he got good. He got he, he was well regarded for his preseason play, but uh, you know doesn't well, mean anything for the play. I mean he's they're saying he's more than 50 50 is going to play the game, but I don't know if that's the reason why. If the line is that low. Well. Yeah, that's all he needs to do. <laughs> all right. Can I give my prop bets because I, mean, I have yeah. to redeem myself from last week because I don't think anybody scored for me last week. I, I <laughs> yeah, only have okay. two this week, two touchdowns. Hawkinson, plus 150, and Richardson. I mean, it's a minus, minus 105. He's getting. He's going to run another one in. They're just going to continue running him because yep. that's all he's they the could Jalen do. Hurts of the Colts. He's the Jalen Hurts of Steichen. new Steichen's, Steichen's new Jalen Hurts. So one of them are scoring, if not right. both. How about anybody else? Any props before we head out? I didn't look at that. Uh, let me look real quick. I want to say uh, Brown gets in the end zone this week, so that's plus one thirty-five. Man, what is he? Plus what? Plus one thirty-five. All right. Well, that was episode 74, a very entertaining one, I may say. (laughs) Episode 74, Broad Street Hustle, not just a podcast. We're a playbook for success. Have a great night.